Hi everyone, my name is Ken. Welcome to This House. Today we are in Moberly, Missouri, exploring a house that was built in 1909. Now, this house has some really interesting features, and I'd like to see a discussion down in the comments below about whether or not you think this house is maybe classical revival, colonial revival, Greek revival, or maybe a combination of all three. Let's take a quick look around the outside, and then let's go explore. We've just walked inside and immediately we are in the stair hall. If we look up, we can see all of the beams on the ceiling separated by the tin ceiling inserts. And right above us is a chandelier suspended from a plaster medallion. Shifting our focus back down and directly behind me here is an entrance out to the Port Coher, and we can take a look at that real fast. So you could imagine horses and buggies bringing the owners of this home up to this porch where they could then enter. Coming back inside, we can now see the newel post. Let's take a moment to really see this because it is heavily ornate. Running up the stairs under the banister are spiraled spindles, and we can really take a moment to appreciate this. Now, cutting across the stair hall, there are a few more things to talk about in here. First is this mirror with the Corinthian columns. So let's take a moment to see this, and we can also enjoy the wallpaper above it as it depicts a park with bridges and lakes and waterfalls. It's just really fun to have this integrated into this house. And directly behind me are the leaded stained glass doors that will take us into the dining room, and we'll see that in just a moment. First, let's go ahead and cross into the parlor. This room really starts to open up as we just cross through a boxed archway. Now we can see that all of the woodwork in this room has been painted. So as we look up, we can see the intricate plaster details that surround the ceiling. Not only is there a torch motif that we can see present in the corners of this space, but as it starts to come in, it circles in on a plaster medallion from which another chandelier is suspended. Now shifting our focus back down, we can see a large mirror that is centered on the boxed archway. Now this mirror is actually identical to the one that we just saw in the stair hall. The only difference is that it is now painted white. Now passing further into this space, we come to another chandelier that is identical to the one that we just saw, once again suspended from a plaster medallion. Now it appears that this was once painted gold or is in the process of being painted gold. As we can look around at the decorative corbels, the dentil molding, and the plaster work that surrounds us on the ceiling. Shifting our focus back down, I am standing in front of a very ornate fireplace. And this has drama masks, it has a floral motif about it, it has what appears to be a brass or a copper hood with a marble surround. And on either side of this fireplace are matching stained glass windows that have crests in them. Now we can see that the stained glass has started to sag and warp over time as it does. And below these are built-in cabinets with glass panel doors. Centered to this space is another box archway, which is going to take us out to the stair hall. So come on through here and let's check out the dining room. Now walking in here, one of the first things that really catches us is the plaster work up on the ceiling. So let's take a moment to look up and see all of this. The crown molding that surrounds the space is incredibly ornate. If we look above the door, some of these flowers still have their color in them. Over on this side of the room, it begins to open up as there is a large bay window. There's also stained glass above the central window 
and what appears to be a built-in hutch that is above the radiator. Now over here on the other side of the room is another hutch that is actually built into the wall and we can see the molding that goes up and surrounds it and actually fastens it to the wall. Now this one has leaded glass panels inside of the various cabinets and down below we can see what appears to be the original hardware. Continuing through the dining room, we come to a swinging door with a door plate, and this one is transparent. So let's pass on through here, and this brings us into the butler's pantry. And one of the first things that we notice in this space is an oven radiator. So this was the equivalent of a Victorian era microwave. You would open up these doors, and you could put your food in here so that it stayed warm. And that's just a really interesting thing that we find in this house. Now, continuing forward, we can see a Tiffany chandelier suspended from the ceiling, as well as beams that soar overhead and built-in cabinets. Now, of course, most of this appears to be newer, but it most likely would have served the same purpose back when this house was originally built. So come on through here with me and let's check out the kitchen. And one of the first things we notice is we can now see an egg and dart pattern that runs along the pediment piece above this boxed archway. Continuing into the kitchen and still looking up, we can see that the beams are continued from the last room into this room, and the color scheme is still the same. So of course, the cabinets behind me all appear to be newer. However, there is a vintage stove over here up against what appears to be an old chimney for what might have been a wood-burning stove at one point. Now behind me is a bathroom, and we can just peek our heads in here. There is also the maid staircase that goes up to the second floor, so we'll just take a look at all of this before moving on. On the other side of the kitchen is an entrance to a more modern edition of the house, and this is set up more as a family room, so we'll just peek our heads in here real fast and then we'll move along. Now that we've seen the entire first floor, let's start making our way back to the stair hall. So come on through here, and we're now going to cut through the bathroom to the parlor. Something to note about this bathroom is that it's a pass through between the kitchen and the parlor, and the downstairs entrance is off to my side right here. We won't explore that today, but I'm so excited to show you all what's upstairs. So let's cut back on through here and make our way on up. Midway up the stairs, we come across a pair of stained glass windows that are staggered with the rise of the stairs. So let's take a moment to see these and to see the warping that has happened with them over time. Now arriving at the top of the steps, there are dueling mule posts that sit here, and these are a little different than the ones that we saw downstairs. So let's take a moment and just notice kind of how simplistic they are. They do have dentil molding, and then they have a floral motif that surrounds the top here. Now off to this side is a crystal doorknob. We'll go ahead and just take a peek at this. This brings us into a sunroom. Now we are directly above the Port Cohere that we saw downstairs. So you can imagine being able to look out these windows and seeing the horse and buggy pull up and know that mom and dad are home or something like that. So it's just a really fun thing that you can think of happening in this space. Now surrounding us are Roman windows and the bottom section here, these all fold out. We can see the hinges here. So you could open all of this up to let in fresh air.
Making our way in from the sunroom, we're back now at the landing at the top of the stairs. So let's cut through the second floor stair hall. And this is going to take us to the first bedroom. But before we walk in, let's take a moment to look up at the laurel molding that is on the pediment of this door frame. As we enter this bedroom, I want us all to first notice that there are double doors that let us out onto the veranda, but above that is a transom window that extends the full width. And while we've been exploring houses this year, we have not come across a transom window that is quite this large. And over on this side of the room is a large built-in. Once again, we have the laurel motif that runs above this with an egg and dart pattern above that. And this is a built-in with glass panel doors and wooden shelves. So we can just take a moment to see the rest of this room and its details. Now opening the double doors and passing through the screen door, we can get a closer look at what this veranda is like. So let's look down at the balusters as they stagger along. And then it looks as if though, perhaps the railing was raised at some point more recently, probably for safety reasons. Now there's another just really amazing feature. We are up here at the top of these oversized Corinthian columns. So let's take a moment to just really see all of these details up close. Coming back inside, we're now going to shut these double doors and we're going to continue exploring this house. So attached to this room is another room that's been adjoined. All of the millwork in here has been painted white, aside from the gold leaf trim that soars above us around this space. Bringing our focus back down on the fireplace, we can see that it has a subway tile surround as well as metal trim that delineates the fireplace with what looks to be the original porcelain logs. Now attached to this room is also a bathroom and an oversized closet. We're not going to peek in there today though, so come on and follow me through here. This brings us to the third bedroom that we'll see up here. And of course, it looks like there used to be a fireplace here where there's a chimney that's been boxed in, but it looks like that's no longer present. So let's just take a quick glance around the space and continue on. Passing out of this room, we come back through the stair hall, and we're now going to go into the fourth bedroom that we'll see up here. So come on in here and let's just take a look around. Once again, we have painted millwork. The pediments above the doors for both the oversized closet and the bathroom are now a little different. We have just an egg and dart pattern above the bathroom door and a laurel pattern above the closet door. So let's just take a moment to peek around this. Inside of this bathroom, we can see the hexagon floors, and there is a cabinet that has been built over the radiator. Now, something really amazing. Let's look at all of the tile work on the wall. Not only is there rounded tile in the corners, but there's also rounded bull nose above it. Passing out of this room, we're now going to make our way down a hallway. So come on through here with me. Off to this side are the main staircase. And over here is a laundry chute. I'm not going to open this up today, but it's just really awesome that this has this. So off to this side is the bathroom that we just looked at. And over here is the fifth bedroom. So come on through here. And this room is a lot smaller. We could imagine this is maybe a nursery. Now it does have a bathroom that's in progress over here. So we can just take a quick glance around the space and then we'll go check out the last room. Making our way to the last stop in this hallway where we dead end, 
there's something really interesting I want to show you. So let's open up this panel and we can take a look at the old fuse box. Coming through here, we now come in what might be considered the laundry room. There are some really interesting features to point out here, such as these hanging glass lamps. They're pretty ornate. And over on this side is what appears to be an original built-in. And it's just really interesting how there's painted over hardware, there's newer hardware, and then there's what appears to be the original porcelain hardware up on the very top, just on this one set of cabinets. Thank you all for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I want to take a quick moment just to say thank you to everyone at home watching this. This has been an amazing first year for my YouTube channel and all of your comments, I've read every single one of them and there's been a lot of love poured into them and a lot of thought poured into them. And I just wanna say thank you for not only helping me to grow as someone who gives presentations, but also as an individual, because of your feedback, I feel like I've been able to really up my game and bring you better videos. So please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Have a happy new year, and I'll see you next time on This House.